everybody, it's Dr. Rick. I'm coming to you with the third protein video. The food you eat, and hopefully it's mostly whole food, plant-based dieting, the basic building blocks are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. For this talk, we're going to talk about proteins. Now, everybody's supposed to have proteins. Back in the 80s, I took two titles, Mr. East Coast and Mr. Natural New Jersey. They were actually the teenage divisions. I was 18 back in 1982. Uh, the only thing I knew was to eat tuna fish, and I was also a college kid working three jobs, so I didn't really have money to buy steak uh, that often, so just relied on crackers and tuna fish and cut down. And I was able to exercise and sleep properly and probably drank too much back then, but when you're young, you're kind of bulletproof. Your body can digest anything and your brain can tolerate minimal amounts of sleep, and you'll still be happy, emotionally joyful, and all that other stuff and muscle will respond, but that does not last forever. Uh, so I have to implore that even though you might have been able to tolerate stuff in your teens, and your 20s, and your 30s, you got to be careful because when you get to 50, I'm seeing diseases in all my colleagues. Uh, my roommate from college died of pancreatic cancer. I had a couple others that have been through bypass already, so it takes about 10 to 20 years to manifest disease. Check out my video on diabetes and you'll see what I uh, found in a patient of mine. More importantly in, on this topic of protein, if you want to eat properly and not lose muscle mass, you have to exercise. The whole food plant-based diet that we're trying to manifest and lower cholesterol and, and keep a body mass index that's low and keep sugar that's low, it all has to be burnt up properly. So if you do a really good well-balanced protein, carbohydrate, and fat uh, composition in your daily diet, and you don't exercise, even if you take massive amounts of protein, it still gets turned into fat, or it still gets stored as depot fat, it's gonna to be tough to get away, so you have to have some form of activity. I try to be the example by telling my 50, 60, and 70 year old patients, you have to exercise. It doesn't have to be bodybuilding, it doesn't have to be training for a marathon, you just have to do something five days a week, 30 minutes at a time at moderate intensity. If you do that, and you maintain a pretty decent diet, then you should actually be able to keep your waistline down, keep your body mass index down, and have some muscle mass. The more muscle mass you have, the more motion you can drive, the better you'll feel, the less creaky the joints will be, and the more enthusiasm you'll have to do more exercise. Mobility is the key to being independent. So anyway, these are examples of protein. Uh, I usually stay away from red meat. I had this in the freezer. Uh, usually an ounce of red meat is equal to about five grams of protein. So if you do cook it up, try to get lean as best as you can because if you're going to do a lot of the steak, you're going to have to deal with the cholesterol sooner or later. And it always accumulates later, so be careful. If you can finish off one piece of chicken breast, it'll give you about 20 to 29 grams of protein, which is nice. That's a piece of filet. Uh, eggs are actually okay now. They used to be bad, then they used to be good. You know, the, there are some studies uh, out of Canada that say one egg a day in people that were followed for about 14 years did not lead to any heart disease. So the cool thing about eggs is that hopefully our farmers will raise cage-free chickens and feed them high omega-3 sources so your egg will actually have a high omega-3 source in it. So it is good to have omega-3. It's also good for other things that help with the eyes. Uh, so one a day, not bad. An egg, hard-boiled, easy to go, you're done. Legumes and beans also provide you a great source of protein. A half a cup of these will give you six grams of protein. I always have to be careful with whatever is canned because if it's canned, it probably has high sodium just to preserve it. But it is an easy access for my guys who don't cook. Chicken is also a good source of protein in the can for those of you who don't want to worry about filet and this is nice for packing or keeping in your car or on hikes. A uh, third a cup of this type of chicken or this type of canned chicken is equal to about 12 grams of protein and you can prepare it any way you want or add it to whatever you want. You can also put it in a Ziploc and save it for the rest of your hike if you want. Uh, as you all have watched my Meals Ready to Eat, my MRE videos, I like pink salmon. Pink salmon is equal to about uh, 13 grams per one package of salmon. Uh, I love sardines. I keep these in the office, but uh, my staff usually asks me to eat outside because they stink up the office. Sardines are a fantastic source of omega-3. One container of this, one can of this is equal to about 12 grams of protein. Tofurkey is also good. This is soy. This is tofu. 
but it's made to look like a turkey sausage, I guess. This is great. It tastes pretty good. I love Tofurky's company. It's, it is processed, but it's minimally processed. One hot dog of Tofurky is equal to about 26 grams of protein. That's a high source. Uh, that you can actually have for lunch or you can eat on the go. You can, and it's essentially pre-cooked as well. So something from my hikers. Uh, then there's, this is regular yogurt. A Greek yogurt almost has double the amount of protein as regular yogurt. One gram per container of protein. I like nuts from Target. They have about five grams of protein per quarter cup, but you'll also have carbohydrates mixed into this stuff. Uh, these are non-salt. As I mentioned in my second video, I love rice powder versus whey. Uh, rice powder is about 12 grams of protein per two and a half tablespoons full, but whey comes in at 15 grams per two scoops. Whey or casein is usually more concentrated in the protein department than the plant-based powders. The whey and the casein will probably be cheaper than the plant-based proteins, as I mentioned in my second video. These are the varieties of protein that you can look for in your aisles. So the formula, as I think I've mentioned before, is usually 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. And that's minimal. Uh, I mentioned in my first video about Jay Hoffman's study with 0.8 and then 1.2 to 1.4 and then 1.4 to higher. The three test groups that he studied showed no differences in the outcome. Now, when I'm talking about my older athletes or my older individuals that exercise, it is important to try to maintain muscle mass because, again, muscle mass gives you movement, movement keeps you independent, and also muscle will provide its own source of hormone for you to have satiety and have stability and emotional mood. The objective for my older adults who exercise is about 1.2 to 1.4 grams per kilogram per day. Uh, just to break it down for me, I, I weigh 140, 145 on a bad day. Uh, going by the small amount, which is 0.8 grams per kilo per day, I would take about 50 grams of protein per day. That's not that much. If I go by 1.2 to 1.4 grams per kilogram per day for me, it would be about 70 to 80 grams of protein in one day. If I go for high end, which I sometimes do when I'm training, that's about 2 grams per kilo per day. That comes in at about 121 grams of protein per day. The only part about that high dose of protein per day is that if you're an athlete but you have kidney disease or you're a diabetic, you got to be careful because that's going to stress out your kidneys. That much protein, will you're going to have to cleave off that nitrogen source that you get from protein and it's got to go somewhere. So you just have to be careful if you're a little bit on the, if you have any medical problems, you got to clear it. My patients, I always watch your kidney function, your liver function anyway, but that's the breakdown for me as far as how I use it. I, I don't go with 0.8, that's too low for me. I usually go with about 80 to 121. I'm going to be going in a competition uh, this June 2016, so I'll be pushing 121 grams per day come uh, next month into June when I get into the Spartan race. Uh, but after that, I'll kind of taper back down to about 80 grams a day. The problem with what I do is it has to be spread out throughout your day. Ideally now, this is now regarding timing. Ideally, the studies, and they're small studies, nobody's actually put out a million bucks to have a randomized controlled trial yet, but the small studies indicate that the best protein, that, or the best time to take protein or assimilate protein so you don't have negative protein balance in the body after a workout is about one hour to three hours after your workout. So, uh, as I mentioned in my first video, I don't like taking pr too much protein before my workouts. I'd rather just hydrate with water. I like to do it right afterward. If I can do it with clean, whole foods, mostly plant-based stuff, then great. If I can't, then I do my shakes and uh, the, the stuff that I made in my second video. But I do that sometime between the first hour of exercise up until the third hour of exercise. And I usually will graze on my big container that I make. I just graze on it for about three hours. After that, it's, the studies aren't that great as far as taking, continuing to take in your protein supplement. But what I will uh, try to suggest is that when you exercise properly, usually you'll have protein synthesis in the bloodstream, in the body, for about 24 hours. After that, it starts to taper down. So protein synthesis is equal to 
growth hormone and IGF. Uh, those are two hormones that kind of pop up after your exercise and they're responsible for growth, uh, for size growth, muscle mass. And that's where my little nephews will probably benefit from because if dad was pushing protein but in the form of whole food, it, it's kind of tough for a little guy or for younger kids to get that much volume in. O older guys, you can take in a lot of volume in the form of steaks and chicken and eggs and fish. But my young guys usually don't have the appetite, especially when they're in school all day. So you can't fit that much protein in on two big meal, uh, for two big meals a day. And again, I don't like to put the protein heavy at night. I think what you do at night is you eat a big meal and then you go to sleep. That's the wrong kind of signals that are sent through the body to have that protein distributed properly. So it also, protein stimulates a little bit of an adrenaline response. Uh, more so than carbohydrates would stimulate a, a parasympathetic response. So I'd rather have the parasympathetic response come on at night, thus a high carbohydrate meal or a carbohydrate dominant meal, and I like to spread out the protein during the day. Nobody usually takes protein in the morning. I think it's important, so I'd like to have you shift over that concept. Definitely want to introduce a little bit of protein in the day. Even if you don't eat breakfast, it's good to introduce protein in the morning because it helps with satiety. I mentioned that in my second video. It's definitely good to use protein or some form of protein carbohydrate blend after you work out within an hour to three hours. Let's just make it that. The, the rule of thumb is if you're going to do what I do as far as 80 grams to 120 grams of protein per day, wait most of that protein during the day, either in the morning, afternoon, late afternoon, but stop by dinner time. Dinner time will be more carbohydrate dominant. The idea of maximizing your own protein is when you exercise and you provide protein or amino acids in the bloodstream, then you'll have less muscle breakdown. If you don't have anything and you're starving yourself, you go to McDonald's after you eat or you have a beer, what's going to happen is during that first 24 hours of exercise, your body's going to be searching with, for energy packets. It's going to be breaking down muscle. So you won't have any muscle gain in the end. The idea with exercise is to exercise, eat properly, gain muscle, build muscle, and exercise more the next day because you have more muscle. Again, if you're exercising properly, you'll probably peak at about 24 hours and you'll be able to exercise again in 48. So if you can do that, if you can maintain a good protein intake, then that's the time when you build muscle or you don't lose it at least. You also lose fat, you gain more strength, you can exercise differently without pain. And if you don't exercise on a certain day, just spread your protein out during the breakfast, lunch, and snack time so that you can assimilate it during the day properly. We have to understand that there is a science to eating, there's a science to nutrition, there's a science to exercise and getting the most out of your exercise, there's a science to living on, but if we get too much into the science, it might get you to the point of being orthorexic or, or being overly obsessed about food and numbers and macronutrients. And you're really supposed to love what you eat, you're supposed to feel good about your exercise, supposed to feel good about your sleep. All this is supposed to make for a better lifestyle. Don't get too concerned, but uh, once you understand the basics, grab onto them, get healthy, and then let them go and just live life as best as you can. If this is good information for you, if you could please put a like on this video, and don't forget to subscribe to me as I try to put out videos every week on different forms of healthy lifestyle.